absolutely Danny Dolaga looking to start it off for Illinois and just get things rolling offensively. You said it not really strong in the first couple innings for Illinois offensively, but Nebraska kind of has that momentum, so we'll see what Illinois can do. Righty versus lefty matchup to get us started here from Haymarket Park as Garza fires outside for a ball first pitch time at 2.32 p.m. One of pitch travels high from Garza. The Huskers have been struggling to find out who that Sunday starter will be consistently. It's been kind of a toss-up between Michael Garza and Caleb Clark throughout the year. Here's the 2-0. Big swing and a miss for strike number one. The Huskers are just 1-3 and three on Sunday in the year 2023. So looking to try and improve on that number as Sunday will be the day, especially in Big Ten play, to try and close out series. 2-1 pitch in there for a called strike, and the count is even at two. Dolla Gale, 180 hitter. Nine hits on the year, one home run, six RBIs. He sends one out to the left side. Gary racing over. He's in foul ground. He won't get there. So Dolla Gale will live to see another pitch. Gary was feet away from that. A good hustle over there, but a little too far out of range for both him and Swanson out in left field. This is the first appearance of the series for Dollagale as well, we should add. He faces another 2-2. Two -two. It's a called strike three, so Garza off to a good start here on Sunday. There's one away. Batting second for the Illinois Fighting Illini. He's had his way with the Huskers the past couple of years. Batting 283 this season. He faces a first pitch ball that's down in the dirt. But he was the number 20 MLB prospect in the Big Ten, according to D1 Baseball, last year. In this series, he's done pretty well. Four of seven, a home run, and three RBIs. He's also been hit twice. 1 0 is dribbled foul down the left side. The Camilla is. Up there in home run numbers for this Illini team with four. He's also up there in the RBI category with 18. He's actually second on the team, trailing his teammate Ryan Mormon by just one. As he looks at a ball outside, two balls and a strike, one out, nobody on. Here at the top of the first inning from Haymarket Park. 2-1 pitch from Garza, fly ball left field. Swanson back at the track, back at the wall, and he will watch this one go. So Brandon Camilla gets things started off right this time around for the Fighting Illini, and they strike first. It's one to nothing. It looked like Camilla didn't know right off the bat that it was going out. I'm not sure if it's a win factor, but you can tell he's definitely excited to add one on the board already this early. Of the season, and now he is tied for that team lead in the RBI category with 19. First pitch from Garza misses low to McDonald. McDonald batting 298. I agree. I don't think it was getting out off the bat either because the wind here at Haymarket Park is blowing pretty strong out to right field. So Camilla hit that one into the wind, and it still found its way out of the ballpark. So Illinois with an early 1-0 lead. Garza fires the 1-1 home to McDonald. Gets by Karen and all the way to the backstop. But this just goes back into the category of Nebraska not playing very well on Sundays for whatever reason this year. 2-1 pitch is dribbled foul, count now even at two. We mentioned it earlier, Nebraska 1-3 on Sundays this year. They're giving up an average of 9.2 runs per game on Sundays. Definitely trying to find somebody to fill that role in the pitcher's mound. 2-2 two -two pitch, hard ground ball right side. Anderson has it at second, throws over to first in time. Good enough for the second out of the inning. Four home runs, nine RBIs, an average of 268. Garza fires home. In there for a called strike one to the bottom half of the zone. Illinois 10 and 9, 0 and 2 in conference play coming into this Sunday finale. Trying to grab one here at Haymarket Park before heading back to Champaign as Janik fouls one off the right side.
Meanwhile, on the other side, Huskers trying to get the sweep we mentioned earlier. They're also 6-1 and one in this ballpark so far this year. 0-2 pitch. Fouled right back into the screen. Yeah, like you mentioned, the Huskers looking for a sweep. That would be huge going into conference play, uh, starting off conference play against Illinois, um, and moving forward with uh, home appearances. Another 0-2 from Garza. Swing and a miss. He struck him out in the dirt. No, they're going to say it's a foul ball. So Janik just got a piece of it at the end of the bat from our vantage point. It looked like it was just a clean swing and a miss, but we'll do the 0-2 pitch once again. And to go on top of the home record just this year, Nebraska, since joining the Big Ten, 9-5 at home against Illinois all time. Another 0-2, shot foul left side. But overall, it's been a pretty even series. Coming into this weekend, Illinois had a 15-13 advantage, now tied up at 15 after the two wins by Nebraska. Once again, the 0-2 bounces in front of home plate. Garza still looking to find a rhythm here, uh, settle down a little bit, and find a routine. Garza's had some lengthy appearances out of the bullpen as there's a ground ball into center field, second hit of the day for Illinois. And the first inning continues from the single from Camden Janik. That one just sneaking through the middle there, passed by Bryce Matthews. Able to get on base and hopefully start a streak of hits. Well, Ryan Mormon, team leader in batting average for those who pretty much play every single day, looks at a strike on the outside corner. Batting 311, two home runs, 19 RBIs. Tied for that lead after the Comia solo home run earlier this inning. That went out to left. Garza now working out of the stretch. There's a fly ball deep into left field. Swanson over towards the line. He's at the track. He's at the wall, and this ball is gone. Second home run of the first inning for the Fighting Illini, and they've exploded here early on a Sunday. It's three to nothing. Yeah, two home runs early in the first inning, and this is exactly what head coach for Illinois, Dan Hartlip, wants for Illinois to come out on top early. And Nebraska had the opposite uh, views yesterday. They were hitting home, they hit two home runs in the first inning. You could just wash away that eight nothing storyline coming into today. It's totally flipped on its head. As you mentioned, Nebraska back to back home runs in the first inning yesterday. Now today, Illinois with two home runs of their own. As they're on top three to nothing with only two gone here in the top of the first inning. Garza fires high and away to Quagliano, a 320 hitter. Smaller sample size than Ryan Mormon. One home run, four RBIs this year, eight hits in total. Garza fires home, and it's a called strike. A ball and two strikes, two outs, and Illinois on top by three, thanks to a pair of home runs, and both of them out to left, where the wind is really not doing you any favors. Here's the one-two from Garza. This is low. Yeah, and you mentioned the win. It looks like it's going from left to right, so really not helping them at all. Just two powerful hits that ended up in left field. A strike away from getting out of the inning is Garza, and he gets it on the outside corner. So Garza picks up his second strike out of the inning, but the damage has been done from Illinois. A pair of home runs gives the fighting line a 3 nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the first. He's been doing that all year long at the dish. A 4.03 average, seven home runs, 33 RBIs as he looks at a strike from Winninger. Yeah, not only can Matthews find a way to score, but he is constantly getting on base. That's a huge advantage to Nebraska. As he sends one right back up the middle and a quick start for Bryce Matthews, a single into center. And the Huskers have their leadoff man aboard. That's 25 straight games now for Bryce Matthews reaching base. Another Husker, and you can point out all these guys throughout the lineup having really good offensive years. He's batting 341 as he looks at a strike.
You mentioned home runs by both Matthews and Carey yesterday. Swanson was also added into that mix with a home run in yesterday's contest. Throw back over to first. Matthews back in head first. In the series so far, Dylan Carey is three for eight, including that home run, has three RBIs and has been hit by a pitch. Has also struck out three times. The righty Winninger fires home, misses down and inside. Some numbers for Jack Winninger. He's two and one. A 5.03 ERA out of Cary Grove, Illinois. Last outing, he went five and a third against Southern Illinois. Picked up the loss, but struck out 10. And there's a base hit into left field. So back to back hits from the top of the order of Nebraska. And all of a sudden, the Huskers have something brewing. Wenninger looks back at second, fires home, and misses inside to Max Anderson. Four home runs in total, 25 RBIs. That's 36 hits. Anderson has hits in every game except for three this year as he waves and misses at strike number one. Bryce Matthews on second, Dylan Carey on first. Illinois with an early 3-0 lead. 1-1 one, one pitch home, dribbler left side, but it goes foul. You mentioned it earlier, but Max Anderson had a home run on Friday, and he's also a big hitter, sitting fifth in the Big Ten with nine doubles on this season. That's one of six categories as well as a team that Nebraska ranks top 30 nationally in, is that doubles and doubles per game. Wenninger's 1-2 upstairs. You can always trust Max Anderson as well. He's been a mainstay in the starting lineup ever since he was a freshman in 2021. Very patient approach. There's a reason why he has a hit in every game except for three. 2-2 two -two, off the hands, and they're going to say it's foul because it hit Anderson in the left foot. So he walks it off. Don't let the sun fool you out there. We were talking pregame. It looks like it's 60 outside. It's about 37 right now. This morning there was snow on the ground. So bizarre. So we will do the 2-2 over again. And Anderson will have another chance. I will mention, too, that one home run that he had on Friday was a three-run home run. So a similar situation here. 2-2 Two -two once again. Swing and a miss, and a big strikeout for Wenninger to stop the bleeding momentarily, as that brings up Josh Karen. So here's the sophomore catcher, Josh Karen, batting 356. Three home runs, 13 RBIs, a chance to make that more here. Potentially with a base hit as he looks at ball number one in at the knees. Josh Karen is two for six through the first two games of this series. Has walked a couple of times. Currently in the midst of a six-game hit streak. 1-0. That one's well inside and it plunks Karen up above the shoulders it looks like. So... Huskers looking to respond to the three spot Illinois put up in the top of the first. Winninger fires home and misses up high. Then transferred to Parkland University and is now at Nebraska and has made a huge impact offensively and defensively. 1-0 pitch, soft ground ball over to Kamiya at third. He steps on the bag, throws over to first. It's a double play and a huge one to get out of the inning for Illinois. 
So the Huskers had their chance. Bases loaded with only one out, and they come up empty thanks to a huge double play from Brandon Camilla over at third. Yeah, and you said it. Confidence is a huge thing for Garza here, just trying to figure out a pace of play and routine for him and just get more comfortable in this position with the pressure of being down three and just getting a, a few outs here in the second inning. Hazel looks at a ball outside. He's batting 229 this year, two home runs, 15 RBIs. One pitch home, misses low. Hazes started 51 games a year ago, just one of six Illini to do so. And he is currently hitless in the series, 0 for 8. Garza's 2-1. Misses high, three balls and a strike to the junior from Oswego, Illinois. Three one pitch, Garza gets it in the bottom of the zone. A big strike to make it a full count. Garza had two strikeouts in the opening frame. Both of them were looking. And the payoff pitch. Ground ball, second base. Anderson has it, second time today. Throws over to Cervantes in time for out number one. Another righty and lefty matchup, second one today for Garza as he fires in a strike at 85 miles an hour. 35 pitches already for Michael Garza, so we'll see how long Will Bolt wants to keep him in as he misses low on a breaking ball at 80. And one thing that also has to be frustrating, too, is on Friday and Saturday, you get extremely quality starts out of Emmett Olsen and Jace Kaminska. One goes six innings, one goes five. And you know you have those two days nailed down in the starting pitching position. And I think Michael Garza will be the man going forward. Here's the one, two. It's fouled off left side. But it's just a matter of gaining that consistency, and the efficiency will come with that. Yeah, and I think for Will Bull, I think he's looking for a solid idea of who that consistent player on Sundays is going to be. And just setting that in stone and figuring that out is important. Harding sends a fly ball, shallow left center, coming in and can't make the play as Swanson, he tried to dive and catch it, it bounced right in front of his glove. And Harding will be held at first after the Husker outfield gets it in quickly, so a bloop single for Brody Harding with one out. Gives the Illini yet another base runner, already hit number four of the game here. Swanson out in left field was almost there. When he was diving, the ball just bounced into his glove, just short of a diving catch. But Illinois now in another position with a runner on base. Connor Milton in the ninth spot, batting 195, or excuse me, 125. No home runs, two RBIs. Throw back over to first. We'll see, that is the first ball that has been a fly ball that hasn't left the yard. I mean, as a pitcher, too, when you give up two quick home runs in the top of the first inning and anything that goes in the air, well, the nerves are probably a little bit higher than normal as he gets a big swing and a miss from Milton. Man on first, only one out. Top second, Illinois by three. And Garza fires a strike on the outside. Garza looks in, is 0-2. Good block from behind the dish by Josh Karen. So after Milton, it will go back to the top of the order that did all that damage in the top of the first is another throwback to check on Harding. Yeah, and you mentioned the lineup going back to the top of the, t back to the first position. If Milton can find a way on base, they're set up for good opportunities to get those two runners in. 
Another ball from Garza, another block from Karen. So that keeps Harding at first for now. Garza's 2-2. Two -two. Line drive right field and through for yet another base hit. Hit number five already for the Illini. Now there's two on with only one out here. They're back in business. It's a perfect hit by Milton there on the right side in between Anderson and Cervantes to get two players on base with only one out. And the Huskers will converge at the pitcher's mound to talk about it. First pitch home, a big swing and a miss from Dollagale. He was 0 for 1 with that strikeout I mentioned earlier. And you mention it. His first at bat was a strikeout looking. This time, just trying to find a way on base, even with a ground ball into the infield to push the runners forward. Quickly down 0 2. Anything into the outfield, too, you have to imagine both runners will tag, depending on how deep it is. But you said it. Just get a productive out if you do get an out. 0 2 pitch. This is low. A ball and two strikes. That was a good block by Karen there. The last thing you want to do is let a pitch go past you for those runners to advance. Garza's 1 2. In the air, right field, shallow, over is Mosley. He can't get there, bounces right in front of him. He gets it back in quickly, however. So no run score, but Illinois has the bases loaded here in the top of the second. You said it to a hit to the outfield. The Illinois base runners are going to tag up, and they seemed a little unsure there. Obviously, you want to stay closer to your original base, but then they took off right when they knew it was going to land. So bases loaded for Brandon Camilla who's one for one with a solo home run that opened up the scoring. Already six hits for the fighting Illini here, and it's only the top of the second. First pitch home, and about a three-quarter swing from Comia gets strike number one. 19 RBIs for Comia this year. Already up to nine-game hit streak after that. Home run, ball gets away from Karen, runner coming home, and he's in, and Illinois extends the lead. It's four to nothing as Harding comes in to score after the wild pitch. Garza uh, showing some obvious frustration there at the mound. It just popped off of Karen's right shin, and just enough so that Harding could score. And that's been an issue that's resurfaced for Nebraska here in the past week or so. That resulted in a walk-off loss at Creighton earlier this week. And it's another one gets blocked by Karen, but bounces away. If you remember going back to Tuesday, Nebraska up two going into the bottom of the ninth at Charles Schwab Field against the Creighton Blue Jays. And Creighton is able to come back. They get three in the bottom of the ninth. They end up winning on a ball that gets away. And the one-two is down low. The last three balls getting away from Karen there, this one in front. Not posing a threat, but. That's the most important part too for Karen, just keep it in front of him. And a 2-2 two -two pitch is a called strike three on the outside. Nice pitch by Garza to get out. Illinois has tacked on one more here in the second. They lead four to nothing as McDonald looks at strike number one. And Cam McDonald's one of only two players to start all 53 games last season. So definitely a veteran on this team. Knows how to go into the box composed. So there's a line drive over the head of Anderson into right field. Two runs will come into score, and the onslaught continues for Illinois. They lead it six to nothing. Makes it back-to-back three-run innings, at least, for Illinois. His first pitch swinging Janik into right. In is Mosley. He camps out underneath. It fights the sun, makes the catch 
and the inning finally comes to an end. But Illinois continues to have success on the offensive side of the ball. They tack on three more in the top of the second, and they lead it six to nothing over Nebraska right here on Big Ten Plus. But we're unable to cash in. Winninger back out on the mound after 15 pitches in the first inning. Fires outside to the senior team captain, Griffin Everett. Everett batting 250, two home runs, nine RBIs. Hit his second home run of the year yesterday, which was one of four home runs that Nebraska put over the fence. Everett faces a 2-0 count. And you mentioned leaving the last inning with bases loaded. The last thing you want to do offensively is leave anybody on base because it's how you score, and that would have give them, given them a huge advantage. If those three base runners would have scored, they would have been right back in this game. So looking to do the same thing this time, except get those runners in. Check swing off the hands of Everett. Winninger will come into field, but he throws it over the head of McDonald. So Griffin, Everett, and the Huskers catch a break. Not always the easiest play for a pitcher to make, and that time Winninger maybe just rushed it a little bit. That brings up Mosley as he looks at a strike. Blake Mosley this year batting 143. Only one hit. This is only his seventh appearance this season. Winninger fires home. The 0-1 swing and a miss for Mosley. His one hit this year was a double. He's had seven at-bats in total. Winninger out of the stretch, looks in. Fires the 0-2 well outside for ball number one. Everett's another one of those veteran players who started all of the games last season. And being on base right now, a part of being a veteran in baseball is having that smart baseball IQ, especially when base running. So he has an advantage out there right now. The one-two home. Fouled off left side over the roof. So Mosley lives to see another pitch. Gabe Swanson waits on deck. Illinois on top of Nebraska, 6-0 here in the series finale on a Sunday from Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska. Connor Clark joined by Skyly Nelson here on Big Ten Plus. Another 1-2. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. And that's been his only official at-bat of the series. First pitch to Swanson, catches the outside corner for strike number one. He started off pretty hot, he has four home runs in total, but yesterday's home run was his first since March 8th against Northern Colorado right here in this very ballpark. 0-1 pitch into center field, back is Milton. He's still going Milton at the track, at the wall, and it's gone. Gabe Swanson homers in back-to-back -back games, and he gets the Huskers on the board here in the second. It's 6-2. What a huge at bat for Swanson there. You mentioned starting off hot. Getting the start at first base today, and he takes a ball up and in. Cervantes is another fifth year team captain along with teammate Griffin Everett. Last game was at Creighton. He came in as a pinch hitter and also played as a defensive sub at first base as well. A ball and a strike. Winninger is two pitches away from doubling his total from the first inning as Cervantes sends one a mile high in the air to right. Dollegale moves in and makes the catch for out number two. I've seen a couple of those high hit balls today, but the wind just isn't powerful enough to do anything. They've been whipping pretty hard and pretty consistently throughout the early stages of this ball game as Bryce Matthews takes the ball up and in his second plate appearance. He's one for one with a single. 
has now reached safely in 25 consecutive games. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss from Matthews down low. Four ten average. Winningers one one is swung on and missed for strike number two. Bryce Matthews, the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week from a week ago, went seven of fourteen in that span. Couple of home runs in there as well. One two pitch, swung on and missed for strike three in the dirt. The tag is applied, and the inning is over. But the Huskers do get two thanks to Gabe Swanson and walk three batters as well. So a bounce back opportunity here for Jackson Brockett out of the bullpen. And he starts it off with a swing and a miss from Ryan Mormon. Yeah, and we talked about it earlier on these Sunday matchups, just finding a pitcher that Will Bolt feels comfortable in with the start. Garza could not get things done today early, giving up six runs. So Brockett looks to fire back and hopefully make something happen on the pitcher's mound. He's off to a good start here after the drop third strike. Throw over to first, completes the strikeout, and there's one up and one down. That officially makes it 12 after the strikeout. And he faces Colton Quagliano, who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout, and he looks at strike number one. Rocket continuing the tough pace in his carry, plays it on a hop and throws in time. A tough play that looked easy from Dylan Carey, and a ground out over to Max Anderson at second base back in the second inning. The lefty Brockett just misses on the outside corner. But well, this is exactly what Will Bolt probably had in mind. Get a fresh arm in there and then, well, get out of the inning quickly because you haven't done that yet today. A ball and a strike to Hazen, now batting 225, two home runs, 15 RBIs. The 1 1 pitch from Brockett in there for a called strike number two. And you mentioned getting out of the inning quick for Jackson Brockett there on the pitcher's mound. He looks to have an advantage with two outs already in this inning. Brockett likes to work quickly. Obviously, the new pitch clock of 20 seconds in the collegiate game. Brockett's 2-2. Two -two, swung on and missed for strike three. So a quick 1-2-3 inning for Brockett and the Huskers in the third. So glad he could join us on a Sunday on Big Ten Plus. And, Connor, we talked about it pregame, but the third inning for this Nebraska team is a big one. Historically, 22 to 5. That's what they're outscoring their opponents in the third inning. And there's a shot down the left field line, but it curves foul from Carey. And you mentioned the run differential there. And this is the exact spot of the lineup that Nebraska wants to do that with two, three, and four hitters due up to begin the third inning. But give Winninger credit. He's dealt with this part of the lineup pretty well as he fires inside to Carey. Carey is one for one with a single, but he struck out Max Anderson. He hit Josh Karen, but then got Cole Evans to ground to do a 5-3 double play to end that first inning. 2-1 pitch, line drive left field. Back is Mormon. He's at the track, twists and turns, and he's able to make the catch. A rocket off the bat of Dylan Carey. Nobody on it. One out here in the bottom of the third. Anderson just one of ten in this series. And he sends a fly ball down the right field line. Dolligill over, and it just creeps over the fence. And that's the exact same spot where he hit that home run on Friday. Second hit of the series for Max Anderson makes it 6-3. to three. And Max Anderson adds to the third inning storyline, putting another one up for Nebraska. First pitch home to Josh Karen is a wild one that finds the backstop. And you can add that to the run differential category there in the third. Now 23 to 5. 1 0 pitch from Winninger in there for a called strike. 
And if Anderson hits that a foot to the right, that's probably going to be a foul ball off of that padded wall right there below the playground down the right field line as Karen looks at ball number two. Karen today was hit by a pitch back in the first. So technically has not recorded in at bat here today. The 2-1 travels in at the feet. Karen with a hit and a team high of two runs yesterday versus Illinois. Winnegar's 3-1. Chopper over to shortstop. Hayes has it, throws on a hop, and it's in time for out number two. Nebraska going for the three-game sweep to open up Big Ten play. Illinois trying to avoid that very sweep as Evans swings and misses. Evans batting 364. After grounding into that double play back in the first, he takes the ball in the dirt. One one is called strike up and outside. Winninger now at 46 pitches at 15 in the first. At 18 in the second. One two check swing and they say Evans went around and it's good enough for strike number three to end the third inning. The the offensive side, hitting-wise, Max Anderson with a home run. So Jackson Brockett looking to continue that efficiency here. Anderson home run went 352 feet down that right field line. It got out in the blink of an eye as Brockett fires in a strike. It's already the fourth home run of the ball game combined between these two teams as there's a rocket right back at Brockett, and it's up the middle into center field for a leadoff single for Brody Harding. It just snuck right under Brockett's left foot there. Probably could have caused some soreness if it would have hit it, but he jumped up just in the nick of time. It's the second hit of the ball game for Brody Harding. So he's two for two, and Connor Milton in the ninth spot, he already has a hit in this ball game as well. So the bottom of the order for Illinois has been doing some significant damage, if you will, so far as Brockett fires in a ball. Yeah, and you mentioned the bottom of the order, but overall, throughout this game so far, Illinois has played a, a very fine-tuned game, um, pretty solid all around, uh, pitching-wise and hitting-wise, especially defensive, too, getting those outs when needed. Brockett fires back over to first. Milton batting 176 after the single in the second inning. Rockets 1-0 in there for a called strike. Gets away from Karen momentarily, but no consequence has come of that. The lefty Brockett fires well inside. Two balls and a strike now to Connor Milton, and the message from Dan Hartlib coming into this inning has to be you can't let Nebraska get momentum right back after you get a six-run lead early, especially in this ballpark. Brockett fires. That's a line drive into left field. Swanson barely has to move. He comes in to make the catch for out number one. 192 average for the season. Brockett fires home this time, up and in. He had 10 total last inning when he sat down the Illini in order. He fires in a strike there to even up the count at one. Dola Gale, a senior from Chicago, Illinois, playing his first game of the series. Rocket fires down and away for ball number two. In fact, his last appearance before today was on March 18th against Southern Illinois, so he's had a pretty decent amount of time off from playing. 2-1 misses low, three balls and a strike. And besides the strikeout 
in his first at bat. He's come back with a single and is looking to expand on that uh, with that large gap that he was took some time off. 3-1 pitch in the air, right center field. Mosley and Evans converging. Mosley will get there in time. And the bluff tag from Harding will not pay off. He goes back to first, and there's two outs. And a backwards K. First pitch is a chopper over to second base. Anderson charges, throws with plenty of time, almost threw it away. But Anderson is able to keep his foot on the bag. Excuse me, Cervantes is. And the inning is over. between these two Big Ten foes to open up conference play. First pitch is upstairs for ball number one to Griffin Everett. Everett reached on an error in the second, batting 244, two home runs, nine RBIs. 1-0 pitch from Winninger's fouled straight back into the screen from Everett. And through three innings so far, Jack Winninger is doing a pretty decent job for Illinois there, only giving up three runs so far. Put up a zero in the bottom of the first. Huskers have scored in each inning since then. It's a big swing and a miss from Griffin Everett. Makes it a ball and two strikes. But it hasn't been damage that is overwhelming, if you will. Illinois scored three in two innings. That's the type of damage where things may start to get out of control. The one-two is out and hits the backstop. On the other side, though, Everett, the fifth-year senior, is very composed at the plate. He's able to get the pitch he wants, and that shows in his slugging percentage, which is 467 on the year. Just finding the pitch he wants and attacking the ball. 2-2. Two -two. Up and in, makes it a full count. We've seen Everett a lot in that designated hitter spot this season. Was an everyday catcher, as you mentioned earlier, last year. But it's kind of taken a new role with Josh Karen playing the way he's been playing behind the dish. Payoff pitch from Winninger. Misses down low, and it's a leadoff walk for the fifth-year senior and team captain, Griffin Everett. So the leadoff man on for the Huskers as Mosley swings and misses for strike number one. He struck out swinging back in the second. The Huskers have... Started with the leadoff man aboard in three of the four innings here today. One pitch misses inside to Mosley. Huskers weren't able to cash in with the bases loaded and only one out in the first. They get two thanks to the home run from Gabe Swanson in the second. And one more in the third off the bat of Max Anderson, a solo home run. As another ball is fired up and away at 97 on the gun. In this series, as there's a ball outside, they hit four yesterday. They hit one on Friday, now two here today. Yeah, and a lot of those have come really early on in the games, especially for both teams. So just looking, on, looking to capitalize on that later in the games is, would be effective as well. 3-1 pitch. Outside, back-to-back -back walks for the Huskers, puts two on with nobody out. So sometimes those guys get put in the shadows, especially when they're not having home runs or doubles or triples every, every game. First pitch home from Winninger is a ball that misses down low. Griffin Everett on second. Blake Mosley on first. Back-to-back -back walks for the Huskers. Makes it two on with nobody out. Still down three, but trying to crawl back into this game. Wenninger fires home, misses inside yet again. This has really been the most trouble that he has faced since that first inning when the Huskers, granted that was bases loaded with one out. This is two on with nobody out, and he's already down 2-0 in the count. Both the players on base have gotten on base because of walks, too. So the last thing you would want to do is walk a third. Fires in a strike to Swanson. Swanson batting 280, five home runs, 14 RBIs. And 
And if you're Nebraska, you desperately want to flip over this lineup card at some point this inning to try and get Bryce Matthews a chance as well. 2-1 pitch, breaking ball that falls into the zone at 78, evens up the count at 2. A nice job by Wenninger to battle back after falling behind 2-0 quickly. Two balls, two strikes, two men on, nobody out. Wenninger fires home. Sharply hit to shortstop. Hayes over to second. Throw over to first is in time and a big double play for Illinois. And the threat just got that much smaller as the middle infield does their work. 0 for 1 today with a pop out in the second. Everett on third base. First pitch misses low. We've talked about Everett being a veteran, too, on the base paths. He's going to do all he can to try and distract Wenninger over there at third. 1-0 pitch home. Cervantes sends it into center field. Milton over to his left, and he's there to make the catch, and the inning is over. So Illinois gets another huge double play to get out of some major trouble, and the Huskers leave a zero on the board in the bottom of the fourth. We head to the fifth. Illinois still on top of Nebraska by three. So glad to have you here on a Sunday series finale to open up Big Ten play. Rocket fires in a strike high in the zone to McDonald. McDonald today is one for two with a two RBI single and a ground out. And one pitch misses upstairs, counting out even at one. McDonald, a grad student from Ladd, Illinois. As he looks at a ball there, he has the Illini all-time record with he's reached base 63 straight games. And he broke that record against Nebraska last year. 2-1 pitch is down low. Three balls and a strike from Brockett to McDonald. For someone who's also able to do that 63 consecutive times, that's another person who has that approach at the plate that differs them from the rest. Just able to have that approach and pick out your pitch. And if it's not there, find a way to get walked and end up on base. Well, he's reached twice here today after the walk to lead things off for the Illinois Fighting Illini in the bottom of the fifth inning. First walk given up by Brockett here today. Here's Janik, who is also one for two with a base hit, came around to score from that Ryan Mormon two-run home run back in the first. First pitch swinging, Janik sends it high in the air to right field, mostly over towards the track, still backing up, and he finally makes the catch. Tagging at first is McDonald. He gets into second safely, so a productive first out for the Illini. He got high enough in the jet stream, and it just carried all the way towards the warning track, almost left the yard. It would have been home run number five here today. As Mormon takes the ball to begin his at-bat, one for two with a two-run home run and a strikeout. An RBI opportunity here in the top of the fifth. First pitch, excuse me, second pitch of the at-bat is a ground ball over to Cervantes at first. He takes it himself over to the bag for a quick second out. Getting out of the fifth. First pitch home is in the dirt to Quagliano. Yeah, Brockett so far has been efficient and effective, and that is due to how he responds to the next batter, to the next pitch and the next play. And with two outs and a player on third, he's looking to do the same thing in this inning. 1-0 pitch, misses inside from Brockett. Quagliano is 0 for 2. With a strikeout in the first, a ground out in the third. Transfer from Illinois Central College. That had a team high 413 last year. And he sends one into right center field over his Evans. He can't get there, and it's an RBI single for Quagliano. And he makes it a four-run game at 7-3 Illinois. So here's Calhaza for the third time today. He scores up to bunt and fouls it back into the screen. It's the ninth hit of the ball game for the Fighting Illini. 
And we're just halfway through here on a Sunday. Rocket looks over at first momentarily, fires high. Karen is up to get it in time. He's still looking for his first hit of the series, now 0 for 10. 1-1 one, one pitch from Brockett. And he fouls that one off right back to Karen. It's very uncharacteristic of Hazel to be 0 for 10, considering you look at all the stats from throughout 2023. He has seven multiple hit games this year and has just not been able to find his groove offensively here in Lincoln this weekend. Yeah, and you know, once you're in a slump, it's so hard to get out of, but once you finally get over that hill, it seems natural again. So I think he's just on the upward climb of this hill and just looking for one simple hit to get him on base to shatter that slump. He faces a one-two count with two outs and a man on first. Brockett with a deep breath, fires in, in the dirt. Nice block by Karen to keep it in front of him. And Quagliano will stay at first as a result. You mentioned the quote-unquote slump that Hazen may be experiencing. It's kind of one of those weird things about baseball. Everybody says baseball's a weird game. As he swings right through for strike number three, and that ends the inning. So now he is 0 for 11. Bryce Matthews leads things off with a called strike here in the bottom of the fifth inning, top of the order for Nebraska. And the work still presents itself as Illinois continues to fire on all cylinders here today. They lead by four, seven to three. Here on a Sunday from Haymarket Park, the series finale. Illinois trying to avoid the sweep. The Huskers trying to start 3-0 in conference play. 1-1 pitch from Wenninger home to Matthews. He fouls it right back into the screen. Matthews one for two today with a single and a strikeout. Has not had a plate appearance since that second inning. Winninger and the Fighting Illini were able to escape both the first and the fourth innings with people on base, which have turned out very crucial in their part being up seven to three currently. It was huge for them to not let any people score on a hit. Wenninger's 2-2. In the air, shallow right side. Harding over from second. He gets called off by the first baseman, McDonald. He makes the catch, and there's one away. And for a Husker lineup that averages around nine runs a game, you have to give a lot of credit to Jack Wenninger as he fires his 70th pitch of the afternoon outside. He's dealt with the heart of this lineup decently well. Obviously, you've seen trouble in the first inning, but that was, you know, the first inning. And he gave up the... Line drive home run to Anderson as he fires in a called strike. But since then, he hasn't given up a run since that Anderson solo home run in the third inning. Yeah, and you're exactly right. Even basically shutting out Bryce Matthews, he had a single in the first. But besides that, he hasn't been able to find a way on base, which is uncharacteristic for him. So Winninger has dealt with this Nebraska lineup pretty well. And a swing and a miss from Carey. Winninger fires first pitch. Swing and a miss from Anderson. Anderson with two hits in the series. Both of them home runs to essentially the same exact spot. And one pitch misses outside for ball number one. One one from Wenninger. Misses outside. Anderson with a 416 average after the solo home run. Looks at a ball inside. Three balls and a strike with two outs to Max Anderson. Second on the team in RBIs. <laughs> 
Out of the line, Wenninger's 3-1. Fouled straight back. Henderson staying very composed in this at bat too. Just chipping away at a couple balls here. A long pause from Winninger, and now the payoff pitch. Called strike three in the outside corner, and Anderson goes down looking to end the fifth for the Fighting Illini. He's had a good day, two for two with a pair of singles as he looks at strike number one on the outside. Harding has come around to score as a result of one of those singles back in the second inning. One of two three-run innings for Illinois. And Harding's the fifth highest on, has the fifth highest on base percentage among regular starters for this Illinois team. And we've seen that so far today, going two for two. Two one pitch, lifted into right field, back is Mosley, it's over his head, it's at the base of the wall. Hardy around first, and he will jog standing up into second, it's a leadoff double. So Brody Harding, a three hit afternoon now with a double. And he gets things started off on the right foot here in the sixth for Illinois. And Mosley was looking to play that ball off the wall, but it got stuck in the corner. And Evans ran over and grabbed it and eventually threw it, but I don't think he anticipated it to stay back there. So a runner in scoring position and nobody out for Connor Milton. You said it, both of those outfielders for Nebraska were looking to play it off the wall. Milton sends a bunt into the air and right into the hands of Brockett. So one pitch, one out there. The threat still remains. Brockett fires home to Dalla Gale, one for three today. Back to the top of the order for Illinois as well. Rocket has given up one run since coming in in the third. And he skips one right in front of Karen. He loses it. So Harding will advance to third with no problem. And the eighth run of the ball game for Illinois is just 90 feet away now. It's been a topic of conversation here throughout the day is whether it's wild pitches, pass balls, whatever. That's been an issue for Nebraska here in the past week or so. 1-1 one, one pitch from Brockett misses low. Yeah, and like you were saying, when there's a runner in scoring position against Nebraska, I feel like they typically end up, end up scoring. But today it seems like the opposite, Nebraska on the offensive end, they had bases loaded at one point, they had a runner out in third at one point, but just weren't able to drive in those runs. Brockett's 3-1, and that one gets by again. They say he didn't foul it off, and Harding will come to score, and that makes it 8-3 Illinois. So yet again, the ball gets by, Karen hits the backstop, and Illinois gets a free run as a result. And just like you were saying, whether it's the ball getting past uh, Karen behind the plate or a hit, they're finding ways to score. And it was an odd developing play because there was a swing from Dollagale, but it never hit his bats. And it looked like it was just a regular foul ball, and there he goes too far around. So. He strikes out for the second out of the inning. His number has been called here on a Sunday afternoon. His team down five. First pitch is a swing and a miss from Brandon Comilla, who is one for three today. Right-hander fires in quickly off the hands of Comilla into foul ground. Cervantes over, can't get there. And Connor, like you were saying, the third pitcher for Nebraska already today. There was a tough start with Michael Garza there in the first two innings with six runs scored. Jackson Brockett had a good effort, though, uh, only allowing two, and that came later. So now we'll see what Will Rizzo can do for the Huskers. 
Rizzo fires up and in at Camilla. And a nice bounce back, too, for Brockett from his one inning start at Creighton earlier this week as Rizzo fires outside to even up the count. He limited the damage as much as he could. Illinois did plate two against Brockett. The 2 2 pitch from Rizzo just misses on the outside. Rizzo thought it was strike three. He was. Already off the mound, hopping his way back to the dugout, but instead it will be a full count. Rizzo's payoff. This is outside, and Camilla draws a two out walk. So the inning continues for Cam McDonald. He's one for two with a two RBI single in the second. He walked in the fifth, came around to score. As Colton Quagliano drove him in with an RBI single in the fifth. Batting 3-0-2. First pitch, Rizzo misses down and away at 94. McDonald has been very good as of late for this Illinois squad as he looks at another ball. Has hits in 10 of his last 11 games, had a nine game hit streak snapped on Friday. But the consistency has been there for McDonald, has a single here today, so you can make the hits in 11 of his last 12. To a pitch right down the pipe for strike one. I think consistency is what this Illinois team wants to build upon, being consistent in multiple games in a row rather than just spurts of it here and there. And I think Cam McDonald can start a trend for that. Rizzo fires, misses low, three balls and a strike. Rizzo's been lighting up the speedometer gun here today. All of his pitches in the low to mid-90s. There's still action in the Husker bullpen down the left field line. 3-1 pitch is in there for a called strike number two. The count is full to McDonald. Two outs here in the top of the six. Camilla at first. Illinois on top by five. The payoff pitch, line drive down the line, and it gets down into right field. Camilla around second, gets the green light around third. Will they send him? They do. Here's the relay throw. Matthews has no play, and Illinois extends the lead with an RBI double from Cam McDonald. It's nine to three. A perfect placement for Cam McDonald there down the right field line. And there's the cutoff person was not in the right position to end up getting that out there at home plate, but it was an awesome hit for him to score the runner at first. So the Huskers were a strike away from getting out of the inning, and Cam McDonald in Illinois had other plans, and their offense continues to click. Nine runs on 11 hits. Chance for more here with a runner in scoring position. Nice block from Karen behind the plate. Camden Janik at the dish, he's one for three. Rizzo glances back over at second a couple of times, his 1-0 pitch, line drive left center field and down. McDonald around third, he will jog in to score. And station to station they go. Illinois with 10 on the board, they're up by seven. Illinois feeling some momentum now with two runs scoring back to back. And now a runner at first again. All with two outs on the board. That is the third hit of the inning for Illinois. Cam McDonald double. The Brody Harding double. And now the Camden Janik single. 
Makes it 12 for the game. Here's Ryan Mormon. Looks at a ball upstairs. One for three with a two-run home run. That came back in the first inning. Illinois has scored now 17 runs in the series. They scored seven in the first two games combined. Now they have 10 here today. Sharp grounder over at third to carry. Throws over to second for the fielder's choice in time, and the inning is over. But Illinois tacks on three more. The league grows to its largest of the afternoon at seven. They lead the Nebraska Cornhuskers 10 to three on Big Ten Plus. Of the afternoon for Illinois in the top of the sixth. As Karen looks at a ball upstairs, Jack Winninger still in the game. That was his 80th pitch of the afternoon. And he's had a pretty quality start here on Sunday. 1-0 pitch, misses inside, two balls and no strikes. That Illinois bullpen hasn't really been very busy, and they haven't needed to be busy. I'm sure some of them would like to move around considering the temperature is outside, but they haven't been needed just yet as Wenninger fires in a strike. Josh Karen today is 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the first and grounded out in the third. 2-1 pitch. Sends a chopper foul right in front of his own dugout. Yeah, overall, a pretty complete game so far from Jack Wenninger. I think that's what Illinois wanted to see uh, coming off those last two games where there was a ton of pitching changes just trying to find some consistency at the mound, and they've done so today with Jack Winninger behind the – and uh, <laughs> at the mound. Fires at a ball upstairs. It's three balls and two strikes now. Out of the wind and the payoff. Chopper left side. Camilla's got it at third, takes a couple of shuffles, throws, and it is in time for out number one. a former Big Ten Player of the Week. Is now three for seven in the series as he looks at a ball. His average right now is 356. It was above 550 during that week that he won Big Ten Player of the Week. So the bat has cooled off, but I think a part of it is due to essentially the law of averages. You're not going to hit 550 for that long amount of time, or at least very few can, as he sends a ground ball to the left side, sliding, and he can't make the play is Hazer, and it gets by him into left field, so a one-out base runner for the Huskers here in the bottom of the sixth. The official ruling for Cole Evans is a single. First pitch home to Everett is a strike. And even at 89, now 90 pitches, Winninger touching 93-94. Neo one misses down and inside. Yeah, we definitely haven't seen Winninger cooling off by any means. Still staying up there and is looking just as fresh as he did in the first inning. Winninger's 1-1, one -one. called strike two in the lower half. When you take a look at the Illinois pitching staff and the appearances are kind of all over the place when it comes to you know guys having seven, eight, maybe even nine appearances. But that can also be a good problem to have because Illinois has a good amount of guys to choose from to go take them out on any given night. So count now even at two for Griffin Everett. Winninger fires home. Ground ball over to second base. Harding over. McDonald touches second, throws over to first. Excuse me, that's Hayes that throws over to McDonald. And the inning is over on a 4-6-3 double play this season. As he faces Colton Quagliano to lead things off in the top half of the seventh inning. And the Huskers need a quick inning if they want any sort of chance to maybe get back into this seven-run ball game. 
One of pitches, chop foul left side. Illinois with their largest lead of the afternoon at seven. They're up 10 to three. Wenninger with a very quality start. The question is, will he come back out for a seventh inning? Illinois has been fantastic offensively today. As Quagliano swings and misses. 10 runs on 12 hits. And if everything stays true, Illinois will avoid the sweep to begin Big Ten play. There's a swing and a miss and a strikeout for Jake Buns to begin things here in the seventh. The lefty Buns working against the righty Haza. Fires in low. Action in the Illinois bullpen. To see if Winninger will come back out or not. That's Alex Vera who's warming up. And there's a line drive into center field. Evans is over. Bounces right in front of him. And he has trouble with it and hustling his way into second. Hazer throw gets away, and he gets into second safely. So aggressive base running by Cal Hazer. He gets an extra 90 feet after what looked like it would have been just a regular single. It bounced right in front of Cole Evans, kind of hit him near the belt and got away, and the aggressiveness of Hazer pays off. Yeah, and Evans did a good job at keeping the ball in front of him, but it looked like it hit his torso and then bounced off, and he grabbed it and threw it back in. Then it just slipped past Bryce Matthews there at second base, giving Hazel the opportunity to get there safely. So here's Brody Harding, who is three for three today with a pair of singles and a double. Does not have an RBI, but a chance here. Buns fires and a swing and a miss. In the last two innings, Illinois has put up runs on the board and now another in scoring position here. Buns fires home, swing and a miss, and he struck him out. So Harding gets retired for the first time here this afternoon. First pitch home from Buns, misses down and away. Karen keeps it in front of him. was swung on and missed. Nice location for Buns on the outside. And Illinois looking for a win here today to avoid the sweep. They will take on Missouri at a neutral field as another big swing and a miss. Takes it a ball and two strikes. And a win today for Illinois would give head coach Dan Hartlib one win away from passing Leah Albright for the most wins in program history at 518. And a big swing and a miss for strike number three. Jake Buns is fired up. So two guys who have not played all afternoon face each other right here, and Luke Sartori looks at a ball outside. Sartori batting 167. Two hits, no home runs, one RBI. 1-0 finds the zone in the outside corner for strike number one. Huskers looking for a spark offensively down seven. 1-1 one, one pitch, misses high. Two balls and a strike to Sartori. And Sartori is one of those guys who usually comes in to pinch run. So if he gets on early, maybe expect to see the Huskers be aggressive on the base paths as Sartori takes a strike. Lefty on righty matchup here to begin things in the bottom half of the seventh. The sidearm style gets Sartori to swing and miss for out number one, first strikeout of the afternoon for Alex Vera. First pitch from Vera, this is high. It's quite the adjustment as well, too, because you're so used to the Wenninger traditional overhand motion as that's a fly ball deep into left field, crushed by Swanson at the track, at the wall, it's gone. 
Gabe Swanson with a second home run today, his third in two games. And the Huskers are a run closer. It's 10 to 4. So here's E. Fry Cervantes after the home run from Swanson takes the ball inside. Cervantes betting 296 today. He's 0 for 2 with a pop out and a fly out. Vera fires in there for a strike. And Cervantes looking to get on base to lead it into the top of the order. Husker still down six. But Cervantes sends a line drive into center field, so back to back hits for Nebraska. Cervantes aboard with a one-out single, and now, as you said, Skyly, top of the order due up. Four. Matthews with a lone single for him in the first. Takes a strike outside. So Cervantes at first. A one. Matthews sends a shot through the left side and into left field. So back-to-back -back base hits. Three hits in a row for the Huskers. He's one for three. And he sends a fly ball into right field. Back at the track is Dolegale. He reaches up. He slams into the wall, and he makes the catch. Somehow, some way, he battled the wind and the sun, loses the hat, and still makes the grab for a huge out number two. Max Anderson with a two-out opportunity. Runners on the corners. First pitch home is in the dirt. It skips away. Matthews will take second. Not a terribly consequential sequence there for Illinois, considering the lead that they possess right now. But Matthews aggressive per usual. And he takes second base. Now two in scoring position for Anderson. He takes the ball up and in. It's 2-0. The 2-0 runs inside, and it gets Anderson right in the midsection. So Anderson flings the bat right back to the on deck. He was hit by a pitch in the first. Takes the ball inside. Bunzelmeyer also has to be extremely cautious with location here, too, because obviously you walk him. That gives Nebraska yet another run. Righty on righty matchup here. Two outs, bases loaded. 1-0 misses just inside. And Karen ahead in the count, 2-0. And it could be a different ball game here in a second. 2-0. Inside, 3-0. So Josh Karen being patient at the dish. Not giving anything up to Bunzelmeyer. Efri Cervantes on third, Bryce Matthews on second, Max Anderson on first. Josh Karen at the dish. 3-0 pitch. Right down the middle for strike number one. If the inning were to go any farther, Cole Evans waits on deck. Wind continues to whip from left to right field. But we've seen plenty of long balls to left field today. Bunzel Myers 3-1. Inside, and he walked him. So Josh Karen draws the walk. Efri Cervantes will jog 90 feet. And the lead is down to five. It's 10 to five. A big opportunity late in this ball game. Huskers down five with the bases loaded. First pitch home, misses inside at the knees. Chance to add to that here. 1-0. Just misses outside for ball number two. Constantina fires. In there, a nice breaking ball at 73 for strike number one. Went with heat in the first two pitches, then relocates with a 73-mile-an-hour breaking ball. Yeah, good decision there by Cole Evans to watch this first two and then see that third one. Evans ahead of the count, 2-1. Check swing, it's a called strike regardless. Count now even at two and Illinois strike away from getting out of major trouble. Now 
And here comes Will Bolt out of the third base side dugout at taking a sweep here this weekend. Still down five. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball left side over to shortstop. Hayes has got it. Throws over to second. It's in time. And Illinois gets out of a jam. Looks at a first pitch ball from Jake Buns. Buns, three strikeouts in the seventh inning. Gave up a base hit as well. But no further damage. Lefty on lefty matchup here to begin the eighth. First pitch roped into center. Evans comes in, catches in on a jog, and quickly went away. And Illinois gets out of yet another bases loaded jam. Nebraska unable to capitalize. And well, I'd venture to say they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves in the grand scheme of things in this ball game, trying to get their first Big Ten win of the year. Yeah, and TJ Cost. Concertina really handled that situation well coming in with bases loaded and he found a way to get it done in the end but yeah like you said Illinois has to be looking forward to getting a win in conference play here today. A ball and a strike to Camilla. His lone hit is a home run he sends one sky high to right. Over towards the line and making the catch is Cole Evans. For out number two. No one misses from Buns for ball number one. McDonald today is two for three, doubled in the sixth. As Buns bounces one in front of the plate and skips away. Two balls and no strikes, nobody on. Two outs, 10 to five, Illinois. Here in the top of the eighth, Connor Clark joined by Skyly Nelson, a Big Ten Plus. Series finale Sunday. 2-0 from Buns. This is, no, it's called a strike. I thought it was going to miss. Yeah, it looks a little low and inside, I would say. Two balls and a strike from Buns. And now time is called. Fires home, and it's a called strike on the inside corner. So Buns battles back to make it even at two. Buns fires. That's in the air. Center field. Sartori is back. Camps out underneath. Makes the catch. And a 1-2-3 inning for Jake Buns. a threat again. Columbus, a 269 hitter on the year, takes strike one. No home runs, nine RBIs, 14 hits in total. And another new face on deck as well for Nebraska, Charlie Fisher. Sidearm delivery just outside, a ball and a strike. Constantina fires, ground ball, left side, sliding stop at shortstop. Hayza throws, long way over, but the pick can't be made by McDonald. And Ben Columbus reaches safely. Constantina fires home, misses inside to Fisher. Fisher. Fisher this year, 304 hitter, three home runs, 17 RBIs. Transfer from Southern Miss. Fisher went one for three. And at bats yesterday. When I was in there for a strike. In the series, he's just one of seven. And has struck out five times in the first two games. Four of those coming on Friday. 1-1 one -one pitch, misses inside yet again. Two balls and a strike. Or at least getting guys on base, I should say. Hasn't really been too much of a problem for Nebraska. The 2-1 is cut on and missed. They've left seven on. But that number isn't really reflective of what's actually happened just because some double plays have ended innings and everybody's been retired and they haven't had any base runners to leave on. 
2-2 pitch, misses low, it's full to Charlie Fisher. But a bases loaded opportunity in the seventh, a bases loaded opportunity in the first. Those are things that Will Bolt and this coaching staff will go back and look at. And I think a big issue with that is the Illinois pitching staff just capitalizing on those opportunities. Fisher gets rung up on a called strike three in the inside corner. He thought it was ball four. First pitch in there for a called strike. We have a final line now for Alex Vera and Corey Bunzelmeyer as well. Vera went two-thirds, three hits, two runs. Both of them earned no walks and a strikeout. As Concertina fires home, Swanson into left center field. It's down for a base hit. Columbus around second. He's digging in for third. He's there, and it's a three-hit day for Gabe Swanson. Throw back over to first to check on Swanson. He's there safely. Cervantes today singled back in the seventh. He's one for three. 321 batting average. That one's in there for a called strike. Cervantes this year, two home runs, three RBIs. A single would make it four. Pitch home, called strike on the outside. And quickly, no balls and two strikes to Cervantes. Top of the order looming for Nebraska on the on-deck circle. Constantino with a long pause, now fires home. Ground ball, left side at shortstop. Hayes is there, throws over to second for the fielder's choice. Swanson is out, but Columbus comes in to score, and it's the fourth RBI of the year for Efri Cervantes. He makes it 10 to six. Lead down to four. It's been as large as seven for Illinois today. First pitch is a called strike on the outside. Matthews today, a pair of singles, one in the first, one in the seventh. Two for four this afternoon. A one. Swing and a miss. No balls and two strikes. Two outs. Efri Cervantes on first. The pitch home. Just misses outside everybody on the infield for Illinois. It took about three or four steps over to their duckout, thinking it was strike three, but Matthews will live to see another pitch. Literally in unison, the pitcher and the four infielders all at once. One, two, there's the strikeout, a swing and a miss from Matthews, and the inning is now over. In the top of the ninth, for the fighting Illini, and he looks at ball one. Janik today, a pair of singles and a pair of pop-outs. Takes strike one. And Shaneman here looking for three quick outs to get back offensively. They have one last chance to score here. So just limiting that to zero runs in this inning is crucial for this Nebraska team to have a chance to fight back. And in addition to that too, just kind of a confidence builder for Shea Shanneman as well. He's pitched a lot this year out of the bullpen as a check swing did not go around to Janik. You hear me reading off the numbers. He's pitched 17 and a third. He's given up 14 runs. The strikeout numbers are high, but the run numbers are a little bit higher than he would like. There's a fly ball right side and it will land foul. Kind of the conversation we had earlier about finding that consistency. He fires and just misses outside. The count is now full. And Shea Shaneman is definitely a, another veteran player on the mound there. He's been here for quite a while. And 
definitely knows how to handle these situations. As he walks Janik to begin things here in the ninth. So Janik aboard for the third time today. And here's Ryan Mormon. Well, next on the schedule for the Illinois Fighting Illini, they take on Missouri at a neutral field, and they host Michigan the weekend of March 31st through April 2nd as Mormon takes a strike. And then they will play on a Tuesday at home against Illinois State, a team that Nebraska saw not too long ago. A one pitch in there for a called strike number two. As for Nebraska, they will host North Dakota State on Tuesday. And they will go down to Texas to take on Texas A&M Corpus Christi in Abilene, Texas. And then they will take on Abilene Christian at their home field. Throw back over to first. And Janik is back in time. Shannerman deals home. It's a ball outside. And every win you can get in the Big Ten is important, especially in the sport of baseball. Because this is usually about a two, maybe even three team bid league for the NCAA tournament come May and June. So it's difficult to get a bid out of this league. So you have to collect every single win you possibly can and factor in RPI as well. And that one's off the hands into shallow left center field and nobody will get to it. And Sartori couldn't get there in time and it's a one out single. And it looked like a late swing there, but somehow still stayed ahead of it to send it over to left center. Just hung up in the air for a while, but it was shallow enough, as you said, to drop in there. Here's Cal Hazer. Shannon fires home, called strike. And back to that RPI conversation too. I mean, Nebraska has the win over number seven Vanderbilt on a neutral site. They have, you know, a decent strength of schedule. Obviously, the 0 3 and one start doesn't help a ton. And then you have a loss to Nichols and University of Nebraska Omaha and Creighton trickled in there as well. As Shannon fires low and away. They won nine of their next ten games after that San Diego series, but now starting to trend kind of in that neutral spot where, you know, they win two and then they lose two, and then they win three and lose four, you know. Yeah, and we've mentioned it earlier today, but consistency is what this team has to find. Carry over from third throws over to first in time for out number two. And first pitch from Shanneman is in there for a called strike. Shannon fires, quickly 0-2. That went at 81 miles an hour. You think a run here, too, essentially puts this game away as Shannon misses down and inside. Obviously, a four-run lead is pretty large, but when you have a Nebraska offense that's top 30 in six offensive categories, you don't want to count them out. Especially when the whole lineup is doing decent enough to make that happen. They have depth in their offensive lineup, and they have the ability to do it if they connect hits and capitalize on those opportunities. One, two from Shannon called strike three. And the pitch home. In there for a called first strike. Today, Dylan Carey singled in the first, and he's been retired three times since. Righty on righty to begin things in the bottom of the ninth. Big swing and a miss. For Nebraska, you're right in the heart of the lineup, so right where you want to be to give you the best chance of making something happen here. 0-2, lifted into left, 
Mormon is there, doesn't have to move a whole bunch, and he's there for out number one. First pitch home, misses just outside. Anderson with two hits in the series, both of them home runs into the right field corner. 1-0, called strike. Breaking ball at 76. Constantina fires home. Anderson hits one into right center field. That ball is carrying, and it is gone. Max Anderson with his third home run of the series, his second one today, and the Huskers stay alive for the moment. It's 10-7. Great timing for a home run, too. Give him one more, just that much closer. And now Josh Karen. He gets a, a ball call up at the top half of the zone. That was the Huskers' 11th hit of the ball game, now down three. They've been as close as three all afternoon. So there's a called strike. Karen has been hit by a pitch and walked. He's also grounded out a pair of times. That one just misses outside. A 347 average, three home runs and 14 RBIs. <laughs> Two one pitch home. Chopper left side over to Camilla at third. He's got a long throw to make. He's got to do it in a hurry, and he does just that for out number two. Evans batting 362. And he gets a called strike from Constantina. Two home runs, 11 RBIs for Evans this year. And he looks at a ball outside. Ben Columbus is on deck. If the game were to continue, Evans fouls it off over the roof right side. And Nebraska down to their final strike. Constertina at 36 pitches, awaiting number 37. It's home, and it's in the dirt. Evans has already struck out once here today, back in the third, trying to avoid that for a second time. 2-2 home. This is down and away. Evans doing a nice job of having a disciplined eye on the outer half of the plate. Trying to elongate this at bats as long as possible. Pitch number 39 from Constantina fouled off. Like you said, Evans having a disciplined up back approach here at the plate. He's going to need it, especially just waiting for his pitch there, just chipping off, chipping away. And if it's a walk, then I think he'll take that just to get on base. Payoff pitch. Ground ball left field. So a base hit keeps Nebraska alive, courtesy of Cole Evans. And here comes Ben Columbus. First pitch, and Evans will take second. Nobody even bothers covering the bag, and there's really no need to at this stage. But now the Huskers with a man in scoring position. The 
Righty on lefty matchup. 1 0 in there for a called strike. Illinois is 5 and 9 in this ballpark. Trying to win a tough one here on the road where they've looked really good from wire to wire. 1 1 pitch misses high and away for ball number 2. 2 1. Line drive and foul now 2 and 2. And once again, Nebraska down to their final strike. And a strike away from being 1 and 4 on Sundays here in 2023. Constantina comes set and fires the 2-2. Chopper foul right side, so Columbus will live to see another pitch. He did single last inning, and his pinch hit appearance came around to score. It was an infield single. It was a nice sliding stop by Hayes at that shortstop, but he was unable to get the throw there. Another 2-2. Just misses inside. A lot of lengthy at-bats being put together here by Nebraska hitters in the bottom of the ninth. The second consecutive full count Constantina has had to face. And his payoff pitch. Fouled straight back into the screen. Another payoff. Check swing, called strike three regardless. Illinois gets a Sunday victory in Lincoln, and they avoid the sweep by a final score of 10 to 7. An impressive day overall from Illinois offensively and defensively.